rolling. Okay. Welcome to Never Dull Moment. I am Greg Blythe, and today we are going to talk about thinning knives. For a lot of you, like myself, you might not have even known what this was or why you're doing it. And, uh, well, we've come to learn through the show that it's very important. When I've been in the knife forum seeing people talking about it, when I've watched different people do it, it became apparent that it's something that you do. I just never knew that I would need to do it, but here we are, thinning a knife. If you've been watching the show, then we've been having countless episodes of Whetstone Wars, where we sharpen the same two knives that we have in front of you. And these same two knives um, have been dulled, sharpened, dulled, sharpened a million times. And what that does, as I will show you, um, we're going to go ahead and get a close-up on this knife. You will be able to see that the cladding goes right down to the edge of the core that's sticking out. And there's not a lot of the metal that we cut with exposed. And so what's happening is we need to expose more of that core metal so that we can get a sharp edge. And you're probably like, how do you know you need to do this? Well, you guys don't know it, but we filmed a whetstone war using these knives in this type of condition and the stones that we were using, we'd used before. So we knew they performed at a super high level and yet the knives were not getting sharp. And that's because basically a lot of the edge is made of core metal, excuse me, it's made of the cladding, made of the iron and not the actual steel that gets the sharpest. So we needed to recede the cladding. So I'm gonna show you side by side of a knife that has been thinned to let you see the difference. Let me get these out for you. I had the perfect angle the other day, but I don't know. Let's see. So we're gonna get these two side by side here. Sorry, I don't wanna cut myself. So you can see here, this freshly thinned, we've got way more of the core metal exposed versus the other one where the core we can see the cladding here, this grayish color. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually gonna turn both of them up. Let's see if so, we get that shot. So this one has been thinned. And the other one needs to be thinned. And they're not they're not that far apart. But this one is thinner now. The angle's slightly off. I'd have, you might just have to throw that still shot in that we have. Okay, I'll, I'll get a still shot for you guys. Okay. But what we've now done, just to talk about it for a second, is the area that had iron on the outside has been removed, making more core actually stick out. Now, thinning is not sharpening. Thinning is not polishing. And a lot of times it seems like Thinning and polishing are in the same family. They're very close. Um, the goal of the thinning was the to remove the thickness of metal. And we're going to talk more about that in a second. The goal of the thinning was for me to remove some of the iron cladding, or even if it was stainless cladding, to expose more of the core. Another thing that we need to talk about, a, a reason that you would thin. So if I had a piece of food, I'll use this plate, as and I had a knife that was thick, as it goes to cut into the food, it is going to wedge. There's a downward force on the angle as it cuts into the food. If the knife is thinner, there's less force. A good way to think about this is if a sailboat like is cutting through the water, it's gonna cut through the water faster, say, than a barge. A barge is thick. So a thinner knife will actually give you a higher performance. Now you can over thin. I mean, if you make it as fragile as a razor blade, razor blades are used once or twice or thrown out. Well, and depending on what you're cutting. So meat like or my wife was saying, depending vegetables. on the purpose of the knife, the knife might need to be thicker for the actual thing that you're using it for. But in this particular instance, these knives have been used so many times that the core steel had receded. There was a thickness behind the edge. We were starting to sharpen, sharpen the iron. We were not getting, um, we were not getting the performance that we needed. Okay. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you the differences and then I want to show you how to do it in several ways. 
And then I want to show you, I want to talk about one other thing that I did not do that you should consider. If you notice on these two knives right here, you'll notice that the thinned knife and the not thinned knife, the cladding begins at the same place. Typically, when you thin a knife, you, re you move this line back. What would happen then is the knife is technically thinner because you're, you're going back up the cladding. And so a lot of times when you're thinning, this line should actually move. In the instance of this particular knife, I just, I personally for the show needed to not do that. I needed more of the core steel exposed and less of the cladding there. So that's what we did. Um, so it is thinner and less cladding. But another thing that we needed to do, well, not needed to do, I wanted to explain something else that happens. I'm going to use this piece of paper as an example. A lot of times the, the blade itself is concave, okay, which means from the edge of the blade to the cladding, it's not straight, it's curved. Mm -hmm. And if I were to take a stone and try to stick it in the curve, I'm not going to get into the low part. So as I'm trying to remove metal, you're going to make your hollow ground knife, if it's a hollow ground knife, you're going to make it into a, a flat grind. So you do need to be aware that if you're going to use a flat stone to do the thinning, you are going to change the profile of the knife where the hollow ground knife is going to be a flat grind. If you needed it to be a hollow ground knife and someone has a, a water wheel like a Tormic, or actually send it back to say Corin knives who has the big spinning wheel they could put the hollow back on it another way you can do it if you did not have all these stones available to you another way you could do it is you literally can use sandpaper um it would obviously take you so long to do this but a 400 grit sandpaper uh you can get it done you could literally even make something round to mimic the sandpaper being hollow and you could work back and forth to fit into the groove of the hollow and that way you could remove some of the core steel. So I'm not ruling out sandpaper, that's why I got it out for you. But I was able to do this with stone and so now I wanna to talk to you how we're gonna do it because we're gonna be doing it on the show. So I have a, a lot of different stones out for you to talk about them. We have a 200 grit nano hone, very aggressive. My, my, uh, my suggestion is if you're gonna use a 200 grit, you need to be very professional at this. You need to be experienced. I mean, this is super aggressive and it's gonna remove metal very fast and you can get uneven spots very fast. Um, I have a 500 grit Morhihe, okay? Just, just pointing out that it's a 500 grit it's also a little softer. I have an 800 um, CBN. And one of the things I'm gonna tell you that I like about the CBN is when they make a CBN stone, the metal plate that the CBN is electroplated to is flat. And whenever I go to do this, unless I'm super experienced like Damien in Croatia or some of the other guys in the natural stone forums and some of the polishing forums, they are able to use stones that they have purposely sanded in a way that's curved. And, and this is way more advanced. These people have stones that would fit that curve. We don't, you and I don't have the money and the expertise to curve a stone to do that. I would recommend using a flat stone. So if you use one of these stones, whether it's the 200, the 500, here I have a 1000 grit. Um, that is by Amanashi. Um, I actually did this knife on the 800. So a, a thousand grit would be a great place to start. If you've never done it before, it's slow enough to give you the time to remove metal, see what you're doing, take your time. You, the, the, the knife costs a lot of money. And, and unless you just have money to blow, take your time. For me, the 800 was a little bit more aggressive and it was already flat. I would have to take the time to flatten these stones. I didn't with the CVN, 
But just remember, if you're using a regular ceramic stone, please make sure it's flat so you don't have to worry about it. You, you understand the area that you're working in on the knife. And so I also am just going to point out that I have a machine next to me. This particular machine is the Hinoki. It is a horizontal rotating stone. It is way more aggressive. It comes in um, different wheels. So this one is super aggressive. Uh, we have a thousand and we have a six thousand. This one, I believe, is a hundred. Whoa. So it would remove metal very rapidly. So if I wanted to use the 1000, okay, I could easily take this off. Okay, if I can get the, <laughs> okay, am I gonna get it out of there? So these are whetstones that fit this machine. You guys have probably seen some of the bigger companies that have the uh, Naniwa version of this. It's an $1,800 machine. This one's only about $350. This is a splatter guide. And you can dip one side down. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> Fun slip. So if we wanted to thin this knife, moves so fast I'm scared what you need to know first off is this is not going to be stuck at um, at the sharpening angle it's going to be flat and you can imagine that a person using this machine they would have to know how to get this knife onto this machine and at that angle so I would tell you to just fear this machine because this machine is going to be way more aggressive and for me to turn this on It's just going to be harder to do okay i think you just have to be more versed in that that's not just a simple fix it's not a simple fix <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to get into the thinning so this knife is going to be laid down on this cbn stone this is an 800 grit cbn stone let me double check to make sure which side i have it on here is the 800 grit good job so we're going to lay this flat. We want it to be so that it's not on the flat up here. We want it to be on that single, but that first bevel that, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we want to not spend a lot of time in one spot because we want this to be thinned evenly. So I want to point out that when we sharpen, a lot of times we bring it up and our fingers are right on the edge. Right now, we're going to put the knife down, and I don't know if you can see this, but the blade is sticking up. We need to turn it. Yep. So this is flat, and our fingers need to be higher up. So instead of on the edge, it needs to be in the middle of the first bevel. Okay. Okay. So we are going to push, and you can see stuff is coming off. I'm going to turn it over and we're going to have some of the gray is already gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so if you can't see that, if you can't see that that is being run, there's a trick. A lot of you more experienced people know this. In case, and if I'm the first video you've ever watched on thinning, you would take and you would mark the blade. It's the magical sharpie trick. It comes off with, uh, with rubbing it off and it comes off with washing it off. So try your best not to go onto the way up on the cladding or above the quote unquote shinogi line.
It's a lot of coloring to do. But again, I didn't have to do this for the first one. But if you need the help, then you need to do it for yourself. Then there's me going, does it really come off? So when you put this down and you get that flush and you move it, you're going to instantly see everything that came right off. Because remember the knife is, the entire knife is kind of laying down, but yep. we've got pressure and the pressure is minute. I mean, we're literally letting the blade, I mean, this 800 grit, it's aggressive. It doesn't need my help of pushing. So my fingers are just there to like make sure that the angle is correct. And I'm always checking to make sure that that blade is down. Now, a lot of knives, in case you don't know it, are thicker at the heel. I was say, is it hard? It looks like it's harder to do at the bottom, perhaps, because of the handle. And um, so, what I do is, my wife was bringing up that the handle can get in the way, on and my uh, stone holder, I'm able to get the, the stone to kind of stick out. Okay. And get the handle out of the way. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but my fingers are slowly moving down the knife. So as we're looking, we can see the high spots and the low spots. We can see where the gray is and the gray has been removed. And our goal is to make that even. We can see at the heel, we didn't even get it. The ink is still there. There's still some, yep. So you'll always see me checking. I'm making sure that it's flat right there. Now I know someone in the comments is going to have a comment about the load up on the CBN. So whether you have a diamond stone or a CBN stone, I recommend that you get some Barkeep's friend and put that on there and rub it with a cloth and that will remove any type of rust that might be on the plate. It will remove any particles that are embedded in between the CBN stones. So in case you're already going to have that question. Let's go ahead and have the answer. So you can still see that I still haven't hit the higher part of the heel. And I can tell you that the angle down here and the angle here are different mm -hmm. because of the thickness the thick, of yeah. the heel. So again, make sure that you're flat. If I leave it down, I'm going to remove coloring of the Kurichi finish up here. Mm -hmm. So make sure. Okay, now you can definitely see that there's removal in this area. We've got to work here, we've got to work here. And honestly, it did not take me that long to do it last night. I did the other knife last night. It just, and it's, and it's gonna obviously going to take less time if you're using a more aggressive stone. Now I want you to see that a lot of the cladding has already been removed in this area. So we're starting to get closer to the core steel exposure. You can still see the low spots and high spots. But you're constantly doing a little bit and checking. And for some of you who polish, you're going to be like, this is a whole lot like polishing. So the difference is when you're polishing, your goal is to get the scratch marks very even and get to the point of that high mirror finish. Well, it's kind of the same in thinning. I mean, first thing is we need the knife to be thinner before we worry about the scratch marks. Um, 
then we would like it even so that way it reflects light evenly and I can tell you that if you do just the thousand grit by itself and the scratch marks are done in the correct direction it looks pretty shiny I mean if you want to keep going to the 3,000 and 4,000 and 6,000 and up you can and then you're more into polishing but right now we are thinning now if you come and look you can see a whole lot of that gray is missing from this area you can see some of it right here mm -hmm. so see that high mark right here we haven't gone down there in a little while seems like a impossible to get well i haven't done i haven't worked on it in like a while i'm working up here right now so my fingers are just holding it down okay i don't need to be more aggressive and i don't need to white knuckle myself now remember i'm pretty sure this blade has a little bit of concavity hollow ground so i would be converting this knife into more of a flat grind if that's so You can see that we are we need a little bit more removed from here and a little bit more removed from here now I want you to notice that I've been using the same direction of scratch marks because if you do your scratch marks in the same direction it helps to give you a better polish now I'm not teaching polishing right now but I will tell you that a lot of times when you want like a mirror finish you'll polish something in one direction all your scratch marks in one direction and then the next way you'll go is 90 degrees so if we were into polishing a lot of times we would be doing both directions and go through a series of stones we are just doing the removal of metal right now and you will see when this is done with all the scratch marks in the same direction that it looks pretty good without ever having to go 90 degrees in the other direction and again what was nice about the cbn stone the stone is flat if i want to do short strokes long strokes i'm not worried about my stone withering away and be like oh i'm really wearing it down or anything the cbn stone's going to be the same size and because it's cubic boron nitride instead of diamonds diamonds if you press too hard can break changing the grit where this stone will always be an 800 grit stone so i want you to look when i'm, when I'm done right here look at the shine on the knife right now without doing any more polishing mm -hmm. i mean it's pretty i mean yes there are like little marks in there that you go that's not a mirror but it isn't the lighting is yeah but it's something if you needed the knife to work and you needed the knife to be thinner and you're not a professional right you could live with that mm -hmm. Now knife polishing, once the knife was thinner, you would really work hard with very light pressure, working in you know different directions to get those scratch marks on one stone even, and then you would go on to the next stone. Most of the time when you're polishing, you're using a much lower grit stone, like a 320, maybe a 180. Like, wow, super aggressive. Um, Let's get that high mark that's on this. Uh, so I'm putting the thumb right down on where that would be. I think it got sh smaller. Oh, yeah. And again, look at the look at the finish right now with just the one thousand grit in the same direction. It's hard to see. What do you think, hun? 
Yeah, it's just hard to see what you see. There but when you, you see the stainless, I mean, the the shot, the marks are scratch marks are in the same direction. Yeah. Sorry, so guys. if you weren't even in polishing and you just needed the knife to be thinner, by going in the same direction, you're going to end up in a pretty good place. And honestly, the more even that you do this, the more it will be apparent that it's even because the scratch marks that go away, they just blend really nice. You need to just let the knife sit on the stone. The stone is 800 grit. It's gonna cut without your pressure. I mean, honestly, other than missing this spot, it looks really good. Like it has to rock up a little bit more like well it's know. it's just thick and again if there's concavity it's sitting in the concave yeah. so until we wear away enough metal to make that area flat and it's gone it is gone you can actually see though there's a little bit of color change from the low part to the high because the there's like a line going horizontal right in yeah. the middle. So that means that there's a high low spot. So we need to just, again, I mean, my pressure is this light. My fingers are here just to keep weight on it. And did that line go away? It's getting better. Ah, sorry. We can still see one, but it's different. Yeah. It's hard for me to pick up at that angle. Because you're the op you know, you're on the other side? Yeah. Yeah. Now, typically, like I said, thinning a knife would mean moving that shinogi line back, okay? So some of this finish would slide back a little bit. Okay? Okay. And because that line is still even, it helps me to know that my, where it tapers is even. If it was a little higher in one spot, it might start taping, tapering a little earlier there. Sorry about the rattle of the plastic. I know you guys tell me you can hear all that stuff. Okay, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna just show you this edge and just to say, without polishing the knife, on the 800 grit stone, that would be the finish of that side. Mm -hmm. Super shiny. Cool. So, if you were not an expert polisher and you wanted to take some sandpaper and make that better, you could. If you wanted to practice your polishing, you can. But remember, even though we made it thinner and it is thinner, we didn't technically put an edge on it. So whether we want to go through the process of getting a burr or whether we want to turn on our machine. All of this equipment is your best friend. It's not necessary. If you have the one stone, the thousand grit stone, and you needed to thin your knife, you could do it. It just takes time. You could use the thousand to put the edge. So if you have what it takes already with the 1000 grit, you can get this done.
I'm glad I got to show you some of the different options that are out there that are available. I'm going to put this down here before the side that we didn't do, just to once again remind you of the differences of sides, the two. Right? I haven't done the other side I'm, yet. I'm confirming. I've got to do the other side. Yes, I've got. I'm... You're going to do both sides to make it thinner. So this is the before. This is the after. Yep. Okay, we're going to do both sides. Yep. Okay, so whether you have 1,000 grit sandpaper, want to do it by hand, or 1,000 grit stone, want to do it that. And Lord, if you're just one of these like amazing people who can use a machine like this, well, hallelujah for or you. Or so what, like a belt sander? Could you do that Oh too? my gosh. So let's just go ahead and mention it real quick because Ryan Swanson's probably like the king of this. He makes every knife thin. I don't even care. He was taught by a great knife maker um, to just knives can use thinning. And um, I've got a video of Ryan Swanson actually thinning a knife. I'll put a link up here. He does incredible work. Once you get your knife thin, I mean, he goes back with the different belts and he polishes the edge to make it. You don't necessarily have to do it. If you want your knives to be pretty, take it on through and get a nice polished edge. But if you just need it thinned, we show you how to thin. Once you get it thinner, you can continue doing the same exact process with different stones, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000, to whatever finish you like. Okay, that is just the you thing. But we wanted to show you the process of thinning the knife and let you know why. And we're excited to get these knives ready for the next Whetstone War so we can once again bring those episodes to you. Thanks again for the support. Hopefully this was not a dull moment and we got some questions answered for you, showed off some equipment you haven't seen before. Talk about that on another episode. Uh, Tuesday night, sometimes we throw a nugget. Otherwise, we see you Friday nights at 8 o'clock. God bless. We'll see you next week.